Welcome back to FamWise. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about postpartum and breastfeeding and what your cycle might look at this point. Well, let's get into it. So the return to your fertility postpartum is going to look different per person and really depends on your breastfeeding pattern. So a breastfeeding woman is in a very long pre-ovulatory phase, aka your follicular phase, and they're actively observing for the onset of fertility. So the pattern you might be seeing is that in ovulatory pattern, you might have a short luteal phase, and then finally the return of your fertile ovulatory pattern as your cycles resume. So likely you'll see many dry days along with some patches of different types of e-mucus. So you can see on the chart below how they have many, many dry days. And then there's some yellow mucus observations. We have an ES day, which we are using peak plus three, just in case ovulation would occur during that point. And then they do have what looks to be a fertile window near the end of their cycle where ovulation likely occurred. And then they got their period after that short luteal phase there. So seeing a short luteal phase after that first ovulation can be very common. Common. And the timing for resuming ovulation is variable per person. So this timing depends on whether a mother is breastfeeding and the frequency of nursing. So breastfeeding effectively suppresses ovulation due to the production of prolactin when her baby suckles. So prolactin suppresses the hormone which triggers ovulation. And the greater a frequency of nursing, the greater the effect of ovulation suppression. And that's because of this hormone prolactin. So if you look at the chart below, we can see that if you are exclusively fully breastfeeding, the return of ovulation can occur on average four to six months, in which you should start charting two months postpartum. So that would include things like only breastfeeding, pacifying the baby at breast, so no pacifiers or bottles, and then the frequent nursing day and night and avoiding schedules. If you are partial breastfeeding, ovulation may return within four to six weeks. So you can start charting at that two weeks postpartum. And this would include implementation of supplements, pacifiers, bottles, including pumping, and then nursing on a schedule instead of on demand. If you are not breastfeeding at all, therefore there is no suppression. So you should begin charting at two weeks postpartum. Now, again, this is really gonna differ when your fertility returns. Some people can go way past about a year and others they get within the four weeks. So this is referred to as lactational amenorrhea. So therefore lactate is breastfeeding and amenorrhea means without menses. So with these three LAM guidelines, the chances of pregnancy is about one to 2%. So if your baby is less than six months old, you are exclusively breastfeeding feeding and you have no bleeding. During the initial four to six months period of exclusive breastfeeding, prolactin suppresses the egg recruitment and ovulations. So therefore, you can't get pregnant. Prolactin levels will start to return, followed by the return of ovulation and then your return of menstruation. So we really need to be looking out for different cervical mucus patches during this time because remember that cervical mucus means that estrogen is starting to rise and that would be due to the development of a follicle from FSH in your brain. So really pay attention to those cervical mucus days and you might see more and more as you start to return back to ovulatory patterns. And that was a super quick lesson, but I just wanted to share a little bit about breastfeeding and postpartum. If you have any questions about that, just pop them in the group chat. And if you are specifically looking for more information on postpartum and breastfeeding, we can go over that one-on-one -on -one, or perhaps I can make another lesson in detail about this.